Welcome back, everyone. Glad to be back. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, we're we're still invited to this thing? I yeah, you <laughs> we made it to three. It's three times we have been in everybody's presence and we haven't killed each other yet. So I think <laughs> we're friends, right? This is what friends do, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Totally. We've totally. known each other a long time. I think we're way past the friends point. Aww. We're family. <laughs> Are we? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> is this what friends do? <laughs> so just so everybody knows, I forgot to mention at the end of last week's episode that once the characters made it into the keep, they leveled up to level two. Huzzah. Woo. Now, normally, uh, you would have to, to gain, regain spells, to regain hit points and things like that. You would have to do a long rest, which is usually about eight hours. But um, due to the module, the module recommends just leveling up the moment you get to the keep. So instead of having that eight hour long rest, we're going to say that the time span between last episode and where we're starting now has been about two hours. You get all of your spell slots back. You get your cool level up. You get all your HP back. And you guys are even more powerful. So how about we just uh, go around the room really quick and introduce ourselves. And then we'll, we'll talk a little bit about what things that your characters get um, as you leveled up. So let's start with Kayla. Okay, I'm Kayla. I play Celestine Peacechild. Um, she is our war cleric, and as such, as we came into the castle, uh, she, not many people noticed, it was extremely hectic, but she carefully uh, took the piece of robe that was still somehow attached to her belt and flung it on her left shoulder to cover the insignia that is on the left shoulder. And as she walks in, and... All the craziness, we make sure Sarker gets to healing, and she spends the next two hours uh, meditating and praying, and as such, she gets a new feature from her class. It's called Channel Divinity. There's two parts to this. There's Turn Undead. Uh, so basically, I can attempt to make any undead around me within 30 feet flee from me for a minute. And the other one I get for Channel Divinity is Guided Strike. And for that, pretty much once of rest, a long or short rest, I can make an attack roll and gain a plus 10 to that roll. And so that's pretty sweet. Is that just for you or is it for everybody? Just me. Just you. Okay. Yep. Cool. Yeah, power granted to me by my god. And otherwise, uh, I get another spell slot, and I'm actually still trying to figure out which spell I want to prepare. So, um, yes. Cool. I'm David, and I am playing Lord Usakar von Pride. He had a awfully rough first encounter there with the kobolds, and is entering the keep in the lowest of style. Carried over someone's back, bleeding out on their clothes. <laughs> it happens, but I suppose it's better than rotting in the street, which was the other option. Um, you know, close-to-death experiences maim some men, cripple them and wound them, but I think Usarker instead has risen to level two, which means that he will <laughs> now have ac access to action surge, which of course allows him to act again during a turn. Cool. I'm, I'm going to cut in right here just for a second, just to mention to the audience that we are not using XP. We are using milestones, which is why all of this is happening. So, all right. Uh, I'm Ashlyn. I am playing Izzy, the Air Genasi fighter. Uh, like Lord Usarker Von Pride, she also got Action Surge with her level two. Uh, as soon as she entered the keep, she basically just made sure that Lenan uh, and her children. Uh, Taryn, Willow, and Reggie, that they're all okay, and introduce her, introduces herself to Kuth, who uh, looks badly injured. Um, and then other than that, just keeps an eye on these new companions that she has found and makes sure that Kurt's okay, because Kurt's her childhood friend. She, she cares about his well-being. So speaking of Kurt, uh, I'm, I'm Ander, and I'm playing Kurt Bernhard. Um, I, he is a... Uh, human barbarian 
Um, and I'm also level two. I got Reckless Attack and Danger Sense uh, as a barbarian. Um, and so what he's doing as we come into the keep, he is super worn out. Uh, he came in at like one HP, um, I believe. Um, mm-hmm. So I think he finds a corner and flops down and like falls asleep right there um, with Whiskers the cat <laughs> curled up in, his, in the crook of his arm. That's a that's a really nice nap. Yeah, is he's a little so, bit jealous. Yeah. I will admit. It, has, it, has it's one of those things. Given up on escaping and is now uh, con, you know, resigned to just being your prisoner. Well, I I think that Whiskers we... is equipped. Whiskers doesn't have a choice anymore. <laughs> 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 no, it, it, we we had a very strong experience, bonding experience in battle. Um, is that I I, I rescued Whiskers in, the, in in her time of need and. She, too, rescued me in my time of need. So going back just a little bit, what exactly does Danger Sense do? Yeah, yeah. For you? Um, and Reckless Attack, you said, uh, right? Reckless Attack, basically, I can choose to um, give my opponents an advantage on attacking me in order to gain advantage on attacking them. Okay. Um, and uh, specifically using Strength. And Danger Sense gives me advantage on deck saving, saving throws um, as long as I'm not blinded, de- deafened, or incapacitated. Nice. Awesome. And the most important question of the night, what does Whiskers look like? What kind of cat is Whiskers? Ooh. So I honestly, I'm, I'm in, envisioning Whiskers off of your cat, Ginger. Ah. Okay. Um, yes. or, that just because that's the first thing that yes. jumped into my mind. Um, <laughs> to the audience, I do have a cat named Ginger. Um, she lives up to her name now. and her fur color. <laughs> yeah, so she, you know, she is a ginger cat. I don't know cat names. Is she of ginger temperament? Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So she's like a fireball when she needs to. So basically, my cat. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Does cool. she have long, shaggy hair? Yeah. So big, big, furry, and fluffy yellow, orange, fluffy. Cat. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Nice. I don't know whose cat this really belongs to. Maybe. Maybe Ginger was a stray. You I've don't know. I, I really hope so. I mean, but... Ginger does have a shiny on her neck, according to the kobolds. Yeah. That's did have true. like a little bell around. But maybe it was neck. just urchins playing pranks on the, the wild animals in the streets and it, she doesn't actually belong to anyone. Or maybe the kobolds killed their previous owners. Yeah, that's an option. I- embrace <laughs> All your... of these are options. <laughs> inner adventure. Not really good options. Just, I'm sorry. You, know, you looted someone's cat. <laughs> well, I, I guess yeah. maybe maybe it'll be a a side quest in uh, among the quests to to find the owner of Ginger. Uh, and until they Whiskers. show up, as Whiskers. you trump a co- cross Faerun, it's your cat to keep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Ah, uh, Whiskers. Maybe she will become the fifth party member. Already done. <laughs> She's equipped. She's already here. <laughs> All right. So, just a recap of last episode. You all engaged in battle. Lots and lots of battle. Yeah. Oh my gosh, so much battle. This is the entire episode. <laughs> <laughs> you guys ran ahead to give uh, Lena Ann and her family space to run without being ambushed. The first battle went pretty well. You guys did very, very well. The second battle, though, unfortunately, Usarker fell unconscious. Celestine managed to stabilize him, but Kurt went down after that in the third battle as well managed to stabilize and get back to one HP because of a natural 20, correct? Yeah. Yes. Stabilization. It yeah. was so awesome. Which, which was because Whiskers came by. And licked your face. And licked my face. Yes. That's the infection reason. <laughs> <laughs> so you all made it to the keep through sheer determination and luck. And as the doors closed behind you, you looked on into the chaos, wondering what would come next. Now, let's just take a moment. And imagine if this were, say, a TV show, the screen goes black. Usarker, you have a fever dream. What is going on? All right. In my dream, I look about and am sitting in the study Uncle Ergosa always kept to himself in Pride Hall. The room is just like I last saw it in every detail, with the most strange and bizarre trinkets which Uncle had acquired in his hobby as a purchaser of antiquities. 
The smell of fine leather mingled with that of ancient tomb dust and the old wood of the house. I could have lingered for hours in that room, as I had as a child growing up, surrounded by the voodoo casks, finger traps, and other endless oddities with which Ergosa wiled away the time. However, my attention was drawn to Ergosa himself, sitting comfortably in his favorite chair, one he claimed was taken from a netherese tomb. In my dream state, the fact that he had a blue dragon's neck and head was only a passing curiosity, and not cause for alarm. I wondered at the Lacertalian features, and pondered whether the species could be related. Uncle spoke to me in his usual boisterous manner. You seem to have gotten in over your head, boy. Stabbed in the guts by looters during a raid, collapsing into the dirt waiting to die, unknown by anyone, with nothing but a mass grave awaiting you. I frown, not at him, but that he's correct, and I must defend myself. So I tell him, I thought if I could rally fellow soldier warriors, we would triumph, being better equipped and likely more skilled than the creatures. I was wrong. Wrong? Uncle Urbosa questioned. Nothing you said there was wrong. But you forgot that whenever you gamble, you might lose. Whenever you put yourself in danger, you might be harmed. That's why kings don't lead from the front, and even still surround themselves with their most loyal followers. If you act as a common soldier, standing shoulder to shoulder against the foe, then your fate will be the same as the common soldiers that day, and when the gods draw straws for the dead, yours will be in the bundle to be drawn, no different than any other. But uncle, how can I make a name for myself if I do not take risks? He chuckled. Of course you must take risks, though you must mitigate them wherever possible. Gather allies, make deals, beg, bargain, and promise for every advantage. And in the end, take the risk with wise courage, knowing that you are get knowing what you are getting into and what you might lose. And maybe you will come to nothing, dying along the road during a raid. But that's the cost of reaching upward towards the bright burning sun of glory. You might just be burned. But... I think you got lucky this time, boy. If you are dreaming of me, then you must not be dead. Dreams are for the living, after all. So, when you wake up, don't thank Timora. Thank those whose hand pulled you to safety and tended your wounds. And by ball, remember to be wise. There are worse things than kobolds in a dragon cult. That's why I cut ties with them in the end. The dream was ending. But I noticed that at the end, Uncle Erbosa's head was no longer a draconic fanged maw. It still wasn't his own head, though. In, the, in tune with dream logic, it had become a fiendish visage, wreathed in lurid fire, sweeping out like wings behind him. And then I awoke. So, Sarkar, as you wake up, you hear... <laughs> What do you think? Do you think he's going to be okay? And your eyes pop open. And you see two uh, clerics standing over you. And one of them sighs in relief. Oh, thank goodness. We thought we thought we had lost you. Are, how are you feeling, sir? Hmm. I've not often sprung up so rapidly from an injury. I must take a moment to compose and examine myself. At this point, I sit up on, I assume, the bed where I am, where they've been attending to me, and begin to inspect. Do I have any injuries, wounds? Is my equipment stripped from me to examine my body? What do I look like? So your equipment was removed so they could get to your wounds a lot easier. And you are, you're still in your clothes, though. And you don't really have any blood on you. They have cleaned you up. They've done all that stuff. You mechanically are at full health. Um, but you may, ha may end up having a few scars left over from this. Uh, behind the two clerics, you see a little girl and a little boy. Who are frantically whispering to the each other. And they look over at you, and then they smile brightly. And the little girl runs off down the hallway and says, He's awake! He's awake! Do I perchance recognize these children? 
be you, you do the little girl who ran off as Taryn and the little boy who's still looking at you with awe and wonder his name is Reggie they both look to be about the same age I smile at him now that I am returned to health the life fades from my flesh and it becomes much less red now that there's no blood on it <laughs> um it's not exactly a pleasant grin though I do it be so <laughs> Re Reggie looks at you and he's he's kind of gripping his sh shirt kind of nervously and he goes sir are, are you okay you saved us are, are you okay mm. I was only assisting in saving you it was a group effort kid and do not worry it appears that some god must have decided to spend a little bit of power in my direction. I suppose I should thank his priests. I nod to whoever, whomever it was who seems to have been done, done the spell. Yeah, the two clerics now are pulling out uh, like bloody bandages that were on you at some point, and they are slowly taking all these instruments and stuff away. Reggie, uh, he, he kind of slowly moves towards you hesitantly and then ever so slightly holds out his hand to give you a hug Aww. this is a strange behavior as far as I'm mm -hmm. concerned so I stand stock still and wait to see what this child has <laughs> he, he wraps his arm around your torso and you hear kind of sniffling <laughs> thank you I was so scared I was so scared you were going to die. Thank you. And then he he quickly pulls away and rubs his eyes and goes, Thank you. Thank you. And then he mentions that uh, his mother probably needs to find him. And he embarrassingly runs off. Aww. Hold on a moment there, Reggie. Before you leave, could you perchance direct me to your other saviors, assuming any of them survived? He hesitates a little moment and then nods and motions to you to follow him. I follow. All right. So as this is happening, you guys are in the middle of the keep. Let me pull that picture up to you. You guys are actually right in the middle of the outside where the... Uh, looks like the middle of the courtyard. Yeah, the basically the middle of the courtyard. Um, You have been asked since most of you were not severely damaged except Kurt but you managed to wake up during this you were told that the governor of Green Nest has ha had heard about your deeds and would be arriving shortly so you guys have spent your time doing what you guys said you were going to do during these uh, the couple hours give or take and you are basically waiting for his instructions as, as you're waiting, uh, Reggie, the little boy, comes out. Again, he's kind of wiping his tears. He looks, looks a little, his eyes look a little red. And uh, Usarker follows afterwards. He lives! Usarker, oh, thank Tempest. Yes. Your wounds weren't too severe. No, it seems that through the miracle of doling out gifts the gods have seen fit that I should walk once more. I'm very glad, because you were super helpful in that fight. Like, tons. Mm. The rest of you seem to have gotten along well and no worse for the wear. I am right as rain. N nothing that won't heal. Uh, Whiskers <laughs> is currently perched on your shoulder. On high alert, <laughs> preparing for anybody who may come and dare attack you. Is she an okay. alarm cat? Is that alarm? She is now. An alarm cat. Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> By owning this cat, you now have the alarm feet. <laughs> Nothing can sneak up on you. Oh, man. That'd yeah, be there awesome. you go. <laughs> this one thing that cat can do the alarm spell <laughs> <laughs> wakes everybody up in this, in this uh, <laughs> vicinity. <laughs> yep. Unfortunately, it can't tell any, you know, any friend from foe like the alarm spell can. So whenever someone comes within 20 feet, <laughs> it goes off. Doesn't the cat just has a very, very specific definition of friend. Mm -hmm. 
So anybody who isn't Kurt, you, right you get a now, paw to the right face. Right now, it's very specific <laughs> right. and only Kurt. So yes. Uh, Just question. a tentative like caress to wake you up. <laughs> cat caress. Oh, <laughs> and then no. snack. Which is something my cat also does to try and wake me up. Oh, my. <laughs> but that's because it's feeding time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> very much so. 5 a.m. every morning. Oh. So what, what does it sound like? What's going on outside? It, it still sounds chaotic. You, you. This is only two hours later, right? This is only two hours later. You uh, are kind of briefed on kind of what's going on. You do see patrols up on the top of the. On the walls? On the walls, yeah. And you do hear the sounds of battering rams on the front door and kind of, oh, kind of in the, okay. the side area. But to you guys, as you've listened, at first you were a little nervous that they were trying to get through. If they had wanted to get through, they probably would have done it by now. It sounds more like it might be for show at oh, this no. point. Do we still <laughs> hear a roar of a dragon you, intermittently? You have for the last couple hours, but slowly over time, the dragon has appeared less and less. Okay. And you've noticed that a lot of people are now no longer afraid of it. And it's kind of more of a staple at this point. Mm-hmm. It's just there for the fear factor. Yeah. Amazing the things that you can get used to, I guess. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's true. People have basically figured out the dragon is not attacking. It's just there. So they're really... Every once in a while, you'll glance and see the dragon. People will glance up, but they're not running. This adds weight to my theory. Mm. It does. Uh, as, as you guys wait for another few minutes, you do see somebody coming down the stairs from the walls. He has um, he has dark hair, dark long hair. He's kind of balding kind of at the top though. So it's kind of like a weird mullety thing. <laughs> He's wearing a blue cloak. Uh, and in this picture, he has a goblin in his hand, but it's actually a crossbow at this point. Yeah, you do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he has, you have noticed this guy. You just didn't realize that this was the governor. You have noticed him walking up and down the wall, but every time that the dragon came out, he went back inside. What? Um, a good leader doesn't lead from the front. <laughs> or you get sniped by lightning. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he comes down, but as he, as he comes down, you do notice that he has bandages on his head and his arm is broken. And it's in a sling. Not so far from the front, yeah. apparently. Not That's far enough, enough perhaps. to get back inside. Yeah. The man approaches you and says, Hello, are, are you are you the adventurers who helped some of our citizens get through the wall? Yes, we are. It seems that it is thanks to your people that we are recovered. And you are, sir? Pardon my manners. Uh, my name is Governor Tarbon Nighthill. And this this man looks to be about in his sixties. Okay. And as you as you can see in my notes on the uh, the projector at the moment, yeah, he's in bandages, jizz, and arm is in a sling. <laughs> he's about sixty, give sixty give or take a few years. Okay. I, I would like to thank you for helping helping my people. Uh, I I this this came out of nowhere. It looks though that the the raiders aren't necessarily trying to kill us thank goodness but unfortunately they have completely surrounded the keep and we have no access to any of the other of any other villagers i don't know what's going on out there but they do not seem to be trying to attack us here i have cre- i have created some teams to go out and try to get more villagers in through a through a back a back door but unfortunately None have returned yet in the last couple hours. Would you would you be willing to help? Can I look around to the group? Um Celestine nods. Yeah? What is this help that you require? By the way, my name is Lord Usarker von Pride. From the Baldur's Gate region is where my family hail. Nice to meet you, sir. I see you are doing well. Last I saw you, you were unconscious in a bed. I'm glad to see you and up. blades will do that to one. Mm-hmm. Yes, I, I, I'm thankful to your clerics that I'm here. So, what kind of aid do you need, sir? We are trying to get as many villagers into the keep as possible. But I, like I said, the, the scouts that I've sent out, unfortunately, have not come back yet. 
I don't know if that's because they are being detained or if they just haven't been able to make it back. I have been told by the keeper of the keep that he, he may have a way to get everybody in, but unfortunately nobody has tried to come back yet. Hmm. So quick meta question. The keeper of the keep and the governor, I, I guess, are obviously two different people. They the are two does different not people. not normally live here? He does not. Okay, got it. Okay. The keep, uh, he mentions that the keep was built to, uh, just in case there was a siege. Uh, okay. It was built to bring all of the villagers in and they had, you know, reserves and things like that. It's to... a storm shelter. Yeah. Got it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but up until this point, he mentions that this has never happened before. This is the first mm-hmm. time since Greenus has ever been in uh, been as a city. This is the first time that this has ever happened. Okay. Um, if I may, while we traveled through the raid in order to get here, I did not see a single guard, nor soldier, nor knight. What forces do you have at your disposal in this time? Uh, he points to the wall and he says, we have we have archers and crossbowmen up at the front and up at the, the uh, up on the walls. If if somebody gets in, we do have some guards to push them back, but unfortunately, everybody was scattered, and I do not know the state of the rest of my my men. And as you look up, you do see there's about twenty archers and crossbowmen up at the top, and as uh, Celestine, uh, Kurt, and Izzy, you have noticed that there are people changing hmm. in the guard, so they change every half an hour to forty five minutes or so. So there, there is military here, but you do think that potentially they are very thin. Okay, and maybe not used to this sort of a disaster, so they may have... Yes, uh, he's a useful fool. They may yeah. have been a little disorganized and um, not as quick to get to their station as they should have. Right. Okay. And just as you guys are talking, um, a, a guard actually comes up and he says, Sir, sir, uh... We, we have a report for you. And he hands Governor Night Hill just a little piece of paper. And as the governor's reading it, his his brow kind of furrows. And he starts to look very, very nervous. And That's he, not good. He looks at you and he says, The guards have spotted a new threat. Raiders are trying to set fire to the town's mill. If it burns, we'll lose our stockpile of flour. And we won't be able to grind more for months. I, like I said, I'm trying to assemble defenders from here and the keep to defend it through the rest of the night, but th- that's going to take time. You'd do us a great service if you, if you could get to the mill quickly and drive away the raiders before they can set it aflame. You'll need to defend it until our forces arrive to take over, but it shouldn't be more than 15 minutes behind you. Will you guys help us? Do you have horses? We have a secret tunnel. Cool. That'll I work. think that will work. Perhaps not as fast as a horse would have been, but very well. It's a small town. Yeah, so as he he point he points you don't to a get map. The horse. So he points <laughs> to a map and he says, "The mill, uh, the mill from here, is about five hundred feet away. But if you go through the secret tunnel, it'll be about a thousand feet away. So it's not too far away. I just need time to assemble people. Is that you, north south or northeast west. So if you're looking at the keep right now, it's actually directly south of you. Okay." And it's on that that lower the lower bend. Okay. Cool. Just after the river. Uh, just before the river. So yeah. So he mentions that there's a secret tunnel. You don't know where it deposits you, but he does tell you that it's a little bit further away. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it sounds like a. So if he looks like he's getting ready to shunt us off rapidly, I'm going to demand. Um, Demand. To have a map that explains oh. where we come out of this tunnel. Or a guide. He he says, I unfortunately don't have a map available, but I do I have... Do. I hold up my map. <laughs> so helpful. <laughs> he says, Un- uh, you know, I actually don't know where it is, but the keeper of the keep does know. I'm so He's, glad. And he turns to the, to the guard and says, please, grab Escobert. And the guard says, you know, salutes and says, yes, sir. And then he runs off. And he says, this will probably take a few minutes if you need time to prepare. Um, mm-hmm. you if have you time have a now. servant who could assist me in restoring my armor to functional 
capacity, I would be appreciative. He he kind of he looks past you and goes, Jacob, help this man with his armor. And Jacob goes, Yes, sir. I'm going to go back to the hospital or wherever my armor was stored and get ready. All right. So as you're getting ready, we'll say that due to help, it takes about five minutes rather than the normal ten. Jacob's that good. Jacob is that good. <laughs> I should you, hope so. you should you should see what his salary is and see if you can beat that salary. And just, <laughs> <with you always. laughs> just hire him to be your personal squire. You squire, yeah. Okay. yeah. You know that that's actually a class feature for the night background. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, yeah, that's right. You get a, you get a squire following you around, or the very exactly. you get three. <laughs> Ooh. So, uh, when you come back, you do see that there is a dwarf running up to you. This is him. He goes, Hi, everyone! My name is Castellan Escobert, the Red. Nice to meet y'all. Please tell me his voice is actually that high. It is that high. Yes. Oh, okay. That's fantastic. And you're a little put off because you assume that this stout man should have a deep voice like yeah, he, he looks the stereotypical dwarf does, but Urgh. no, he does not. <laughs> no. Uh, Izzy is not making any judgments. How may I be of service, sir? Uh, Escobert. By the way, it's spelled, it's spelled E-S-C-O-B-E-R-T. And so I look at it, I'm like, Escobar. Yeah, <laughs> like a that makes sense to me. <laughs> and this is the Castellan of the Keep? Yes. Very well. I will say to him, Castellan, we understand that you are the one who has knowledge of the secret passage. We need to know how to get into it. And I hold out my map where it comes out. I can, I can help you with that, sir. And he says, follow me. So... He, he heads down, so in the keep, if you look, the secret tunnel that they're talking about is actually right right here. There is, on the uh, east side, there is a storage room that looks, um, that basically just looks like a storage room. It's got, you know, barrels, it's got bags of flour, and it looks like it hasn't been touched very long. For a very, sorry, for a very, very long time. And he's, he pulls up his keys and he says, well, the, uh, the last keeper of the keep, he was supposed to, uh, he was supposed to make sure that this tunnel worked, but unfortunately, that hasn't happened. And the, uh, it might be a little cobwebby. <laughs> Cobwebs um, do not bother us. Okay. Torches. Torches are good. And he says, all we got to do is move these piles of of uh, stuff, and the door is right behind here. So he starts moving barrels and things like that. I help him. Also. Okay. Same. Yes, no reason to be idle. So it really only takes you about two or three minutes max to move all this stuff, and you do. You do see a door. He he puts the key into the lock, and he he's, looks like that he's struggling to turn it. So you think that... Yes, it has been a very, very, very oh, long time no. since this door has been opened. Oh, man. So he opens it up, and you hear... And... I think the hinges need to be oiled. Yeah. You guys start thinking, uh... If... If the... Uh, if nobody knew about the secret door before, they do now, because <laughs> of that sound. Oh, it's okay. very loud. You know the gnomes have an invention, WD-1? <laughs> It's the, first, it's the first iteration, but it does wonders for squeaks like that and other you know, stuck mm-hmm. Does it now? Go ahead and make an insight check when you say that. Is he like writing it down on a piece of paper? Um, insight is plus four, so that is a Ooh. 13. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sure they have something that would work very well. And uh, based on his mannerisms, you think he uh, dated a gnome and got burned? Oh. oh no! <laughs> so he's that's her real bad. That's not happening. <laughs> yeah, he got burned real bad. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sure they do. I'm sure they do. So uh, yeah, the the tunnel <laughs> is most likely is single file, and the um when when you guys go through, you will get to what looks to be a grate, and this uh, and he goes on to tell you that this tunnel was um basically disguised to look like a sewer grate, but it actually has access to the river. So if in case okay. there was a siege, they could get water, get, water, get fresh water, okay. and nobody would ever know. 
Nice. He says, now I, I've never, I've never tried to open up the grate before, but, uh, I, here, and he hands you, he, he kind of jangles the keys and he kind of pulls it off and hands it to Usarker and says, this should, this should get it open. Uh, good luck though. It's, it's, I don't know if it's ever been opened. I nod. Thank you oh, for helping boy. us, by the way. We, we really do need that mill. And he kind of salutes you and he scurries away. Okay. Bye, Escobar. Bye. Once he's gone, I say, since nobody has been down here in Worf's lifetime, we should be on guard. Who Agreed. knows what's in the tunnel? Okay. Hopefully only small little creatures if the grate on the other end's held. Or an ooze. Both True. You, guys... you want to poke ahead with your your poker stick there? I can do that. Or do you want me to go first and then you poke behind? You are very sturdy. Perhaps if you went first and functioned as a bulwark and a shield, that would be wise. Sounds oh. good. And also, while he, he you guys were walking and talking, I forgot to mention this. He does tell you that on the map, mm -hmm. you see where that keep is? Mm-hmm. He tells you that the tunnel itself will lead you right to where on the east side, do you see where the bend is closest to the keep? It's the most northern portion. Mm. Mm -hmm. Kind of by number side. two. Right by, yeah, right by number two. That's where that comes out. So we've got several hundred yards, I you guess. Have about a thousand feet, so it's not thousand? too far away. Okay. So between going southeast and then a little bit southwest following yes. the river okay by the way since uh we got had noticed that we were doing all this izzy did put on her leather armor okay she, i think leather only armor only takes like a minute yeah well, i so. also found a, a, a nice bag or pack or something like that to put whispers in you have a little haversack yeah <laughs> <laughs> little baby carrier it's it's the first pet carrier. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, canon. You have created a pet carrier. <laughs> okay. From the courtyard, can I find a 10-foot pole? Mm, very easily, yes. Excellent. Cool. Um, Celestine, that was your name, I believe? Yes. Um, perhaps as we go into the dark, anything dangerous or odd-looking, we could test it with this stick, I say, and I hand it to you. Okay. Can I wield a 10-foot pole and my shield at the same time? Or just hold the ten foot pole. Yeah, in or hand. Yeah. I can just hold the ten foot pole. And yeah, I think you would. You wouldn't be able to do the shield. Okay. Okay. I just, don't know. Uh, I'll mentioned. make a DM call and say no to the shield, but I will look it up later to find out. Okay. How's cool. that sound? Sounds good. Because <laughs> okay. I know if you have like a glaive or something like that, then you cannot right, have you a shield. Cannot wield yeah. it. If it functioned like a spear, then it would. But a ten foot pole is probably longer no, than it's, the it's spear. Big. Yeah, yeah, that's gonna be yeah. pretty big. Okay, cool. Just making sure. Okay. So I will not pull out my shield. I will just wield the 10 foot pole. Okay. And I will take out my crossbow. So go ahead and make note of that on your AC because your AC is down too because you don't have that shield. Mm hmm. Okay. Yeah. So as you guys can see through the picture, this is a lovely fan made picture of the old tunnel because the book itself did not have one. It's oh. dark and dingy and gross. The fan art and... is very lovely, so kudos to the original artist, whoever mm. did. Yes, very, very much so. Mm. So you guys are starting here, obviously. Ooh, okay, tunnel. got it. In the tunnel. And the tunnel is only five feet wide, so you can only go single file. Okay. Is it so... tall enough for us to walk without? Yeah, you don't have to. It's, 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 like I said, it was built to gather water, so it's walkable. Okay, good. But it's also part of a defense where only one person in single mm -hmm. fire can get through. So that means you could pick off people if they if they true, try to get through. True. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I need a marching order. Who would like to be in front? Celestine. Okay, I'm just gonna mark this right here. And Easy Door, you said you had a crossbow. I do. Which you can use in close spaces. Longbow. Uh, I do have both a okay. longbow and a crossbow, but I'm gonna use my crossbow this time. So okay. perhaps if you were in the rear, it may not be possible to fi fire regardless, but in close quarters, it might be hard to dodge. And so Celestine's heavier armor and perhaps my heavier armor would be superior. So perhaps Celestine, myself, Kurt, um, 
would you like to be in the back or would you like to be third? Um, I can go ahead and be third. Okay. Then in case you need me to, if we have trouble with the grade, I might be able to take care of that. Very well. So as you guys are going down, what do you get? What exactly? Are, what are you guys thinking? What's what's going through your head? Because you're now under a time crunch, and you guys aren't even from here. You just met a couple hours ago, and now you guys have been tasked with a mission to help save a city that you don't really have any ties to. What's going on in your guys' head? Well, Izzy is definitely thinking, this isn't what I signed up for. I really hope Jaden's okay. Yeah, m it's similar kind of thing. Like, I'm happy to help, but like, e every moment here that we're not doing, not going forward is, you know, is wasted. But it is the dragon cultist, right? Or cultist of some sort, you know. 50 people, so maybe, you know... Maybe they know uh, where Jaden is because yeah. they're the ones who abducted him? Yeah. The jerks? Maybe this is, you know, kind of whispered conversation between yeah. Izzy yeah. And, and, and Kurt of, like, something like... Do you I, think if we question them, they'll tell us where Jaden is? I, we, we may have to find somebody in the upper ranks or something like that. Because Probably, I don't... I, I doubt any, you know... You know, yeah. lower, lower level. Yeah, none of the cultists we fought against seemed like they would have known anything of that kind of information. Yeah. Is that like and they probably don't scheme? even know his name. I don't know. That pyramid um, scheme thing? Or is it a ziggurat scheme? <laughs> <laughs> ziggurat scheme. Yeah. <laughs> but the, the ransom note given to the pro, the Prazios? Prazios, Prazio. yeah. The ransom note given to the Pravios said to come to, to Greenest, right? Yes, and okay. the date was signed for the day after this. Okay, so we're, we're still on schedule, so we're okay. I didn't even know the date. I just heard Jaden was in trouble, and I came. <laughs> that works. Uh, oh, like, yeah, I've got a note. And like, oh, uh, <laughs> no, here. Master Prazio just told me that his son was abducted, and I said, not Jaden, and I ran out the door. <laughs> it's... It's very dark, so it's, he's just waving around a paper in here, <laughs> rustling. <laughs> Can you no, see in the dark? dark? In my shirt. Uh, uh, do I have dark I don't, vision? None of us have dark vision. I don't think anybody nope. in our party has dark vision. Three so. humans and a... And an air genasi. Air genasi. <laughs> uh, speaking of which, uh, we're going to cast light, and we're going to cast it on the, uh, for now, the end of the pole. Aww. I am the not walking in the dark. What? The moment is over. We were almost a normal adventuring party that carried torches. <laughs> I mean, I can. I thought about it. Well, I, I did. Although think I think light, it. you can only do like a five foot, five foot by five foot. Is that, is that right? I can't remember. Do it on the end of the pole, or tie a string to the pole. It is yeah, a, tie a rag twenty on it or foot radius. Mm -hmm. But what kind of object can you put it on? Oh. One object that is no larger than 10 feet in any dimension. Oh, there you go. Oh, so you're fine. Ironically, Specifically, you're fine. yes, you can. There I mean, you go. <laughs> if I needed to, I was just going to tie I a piece of glass. I've been playing this my whole life. <laughs> you have a glow stick. I do. A 10 foot glow stick. <laughs> it is currently. By the way, Take what color is it? Apart. You can make it whatever color you want. Blue. We'll go with blue. I was thinking okay. red for Tempest, but red is really difficult to see things in. <laughs> Actually, cool. red is considered the ideal color for seeing things and not getting light blindness. With dirt? Just saying, if you're in the dark and you don't want to get light blindness from a sudden flare or something, red the military the does. It, it will, they'll use red light reading maps at night. Does Us would our Usarker like red? Um... Usarker says nothing as you make your blue light. Okay. He will let you. <laughs> this he was all David's commentary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this was this yeah. was a David comment. Would David like? No kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've ever actually had a character who used red light and then tried to argue an advantage for it. No, it, it's probably a like it, it, it's a modern thing. It, I, nobody would know of know of it. <laughs> Necessarily. The light's going to go out as soon as we get close to the end of the well, tunnel. It's okay. Anyway. They, 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 this is they, they, they didn't have wizards. Celestine should make it whatever color she wants. Lights. She's going to go with blue. Because Maybe it should oscillate between all the colors. <laughs> oh, <gosh>. Color loop. <laughs> yeah. Color loop. Oh, no. Yeah. Since so, you know those cha color changing uh, lights I mean, where lights goes, it drip, goes right? into one light and mm -hmm. then goes into the next. And yes. Oh, no. Oh, well. can trip. Make it blue. <laughs> make it pink. pink. <laughs> <laughs> well. Anyway. So as as you uh, put this light on, 
you hear and suddenly you it's see okay, on whispers. Earth, you see a two swarms, actually two swarms she of rats that are coming directly for oh, you. Oh Roll for initiative, everyone. Are these like giant rats or normal size rats? They're normal size. Why but they're, they're, they're fighting of, them. But they're swarms of rats. They don't okay. like blue. <laughs> Apparently, I they are done very much against red. blue light, and Celestine red. has insulted their family yes. with this light. All right, so first off, Izzy. That's a 10. Celestine? Seven. With my lovely minus two. Usarker? Six. Oh, oh good. I'm no. Kurt. doing okay. Also a 10. Wow. Yeah, but Izzy's got a higher deck. Yes, I do. Okay, Izzy does, so I will make you. Mm -hmm. After the fight, can we go back to okay. what our characters are thinking? Because um, Usarker, I would like to talk to Usarker about strategy. But Dude. after after Cur the current fight, strategy is don't get eaten by a rat. <laughs> well, no, no, no. After the rat fight, after the rat fight, the, the journey through the tunnel strategy. All right, the, so the mill strategy. Luckily for strategy. you, the rats rolled also rolled really low. Oh, oh good. So first up, Izzy, oh, what hey. do you do? Well, I'm in the back, and all the rats are in the front. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can see them. Um, can she? I mean, at minimum, there's cover for them. There's light. Each person she, between you. If mm. she looks really, really far, she squishes up against the right side of the cave. You, you, I'm sure you she could can see. Spider it. climb on top of the wall and fire <laughs> from above us. I don't think that's an air gymnastic. You know, everybody duck. Not. Oh no no, you're right. You could levitate. <laughs> <sighs> but why would I levitate in this tiny tunnel when no one else can see me? It's all right. I'm sure if she holds out, <gasps> we could bribe them. Does anyone have cheese? We could bribe them with cheese. <laughs> All right, so I drew I them on any. this wonderful PowerPoint map that I have made. And ignore that yellow line I just accidentally did. <laughs> and there's one behind you, Izzy. <laughs> oh That's boy. 12 swarms That's... of rats right behind <laughs> you. You somehow missed like, them. I was like, is that the king rat? Is he coming to take me? Yes. <laughs> He's coming to take you. <laughs> Better find that piece of cheese. <laughs> what, All right, this Izzy. This is the Christmas special. <laughs> Izzy, what are you doing? I have my crossbow out, so... I'm gonna punch over, aim low, and because I'm assuming that no one is has their legs spread out the entire five feet of the tunnel. We are <laughs> doing the splits. Oh, <laughs> yeah. God. So, uh, so if you try to do that, you are firing through three people. Yep. So they're gonna have a bonus to their AC uh -huh. if you try to do that. Okay. But we're gonna try. Oh, that does not hit. That's like a nine. Oh, you just missed. <laughs> <laughs> Even with the partial cover? Dang. Oh, that's right. No, you don't. You totally missed. Okay. okay, okay. <laughs> I was like, wow. Close. Is there I anything like, else? Dang, what is their AC? <laughs> their AC is three. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't an ooze. <laughs> uh, Does this have three AC? Gelatinous rats. Gelatinous rats. Yeah. Oh, no. That's so, a good are, monster. Are they like oh gummy God. bears but gummy rats? Oh, that would <laughs> that be deal amazing. acid damage. Oh, that oh. would be amazing. Oh, oh. Izzy, anything else you would like to do? And you um, stick. nope, that's it. All right, Kurt, your turn. Okay. Um, there's people in the way. They have bonuses. Yeah. But can we move through? We should be able to move. You through technically it. can move through allied spaces. If you stay right next to them, though, you're you're gonna be squeezed, and it's gonna be real tight. Is that where the rats are? Is that ten feet? It looks like it's ten feet. Yeah, it's <laughs> ten feet away. Okay, well, they, they, you just saw them. Yeah. They just saw the light. You blinded them mm -hmm. because of light blindness, and they yes. are coming for you. Okay. The condition is not blind. They're just surprised. They just <laughs> blinded. Ah, the oh. condition is surprised. Yeah. No, not that surprised. If we're surprised too. enough that I can get in front of Celestine. Mm hmm. I'm going to do that. Okay. You can. Yes, you can. Uh, I'm going to rage and pull out my battle axe, my wood axe, and, you know, put, you know, push past Sarker and Celestine and throw myself into the rats. Perfect. Um, Go ahead. Go rat bashing. Yes. Ooh, Whiskers is going to love this. Right? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Whiskers I mean, can uh, probably I'm take out her own. Uh, yeah, I, I think. Yeah, I, I'm just going to go... Chaser? What? Uh, maybe. We'll find out. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go ahead and use my battle axe. All right, go ahead. Question for the DM. 
I see two rat swarms next to each other. Does it widen out into a 10 foot um, wide? Yes, it does. Okay. okay. Uh, I add a 10 to hit. A 10 hits? Oh, good. What kind of damage are you doing? Uh, this is flashing. I assume it's an axe. Okay. Um, that is going to be seven damage. All right. So as you take a swing, you notice that not all of it went through. You managed to catch a couple rats, but only a couple. Yeah, because they, they move out of the way, I bet. They, yeah, they scattered out of the way. Swoosh in between them. We okay. get Molotov cocktails, alchemist's fire, or, you know, magic spells. That would be nice. <laughs> uh, I don't, don't, don't like that in a five-foot mm-hmm. space. Okay. If only you had a wizard who knew fireball in this tight space. <laughs> sounds like If only you had a wizard who'd be high yeah. enough with a third-level spell for fireball. That too. Okay. Well, that's the end of my turn. Okay. And Next. that's Whiskers jumps out of my pack and starts attacking rats. Okay. Some flavor attacks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Celestine, it is your turn. Okay. Uh, Kurt, did you attack the top one or the bottom one? North or south? North. North? Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead, but you're just standing next to them. Yeah. Yeah, I, I went yeah, up to it. Where they are at this point... Uh, it's now 10 feet across. Uh-huh. So he's standing in the five-foot square right in front of... Right the in front of me and right in front of them. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to squeeze by Kurt, or Celestine's going to squeeze by Kurt, and she's actually going to occupy the space of the... I go for A or B, you guys. South. South? He took yep. A. Go to okay. B. So I'm going to take on B. So I'm going to occupy B's space. Yeah. Okay. And I'm dropped my hammer and when we got down into the caves i actually took off my robe so i'm now just wearing the chain mail i normally do when i'm in battle so i dropped my uh the pole back my original position Mm -hmm. so it's still lighting the cave i pull out my uh war mall occupy the space and i swing at them go for it 14 14 hits Okay. What kind of damage is this? Bludgeoning. Bludgeoning. Okay. Yep. Nine damage. Right. You also notice that you only caught a few of them. Okay. Anything else? Nope, that's it. All right. Usarker, it's your turn. Very well. Moving into the space recently emptied by... Actually, no. I will not move. I will leave that space for our beloved Isidore. Thanks. You can reach from far away. Staying where I am, I reach out with my glaive and slash at some of the rats. All right, slash, slash. I got an almighty 13. That hits? Um, yeah, that would hit. Okay, uh, you, what kind of damage is this again? Slashing? Slashing. Okay. And, and you varies. said you're going after A? Yes. Or B? Okay. And I'm doing eight damage. Again, it doesn't really seem to be do- doing much. Mm. Unfortunately. Does anyone have anything that can spread out, hit many at once? Maybe fire, maybe acid, maybe a toxic gas that sinks to the ground. In the meantime, it looks like if we can spread out and stomp on them, we can maybe be able to get a few extra. I'm using that as my tandem tactician for Kurt and Celestine. To on rat A. I would do it for Izzy, because I'm attacking B right now. Okay, fine. Izzy, rat A. Okay. All right, you guys have advantage on your next attacks, right? Cool. Mm -hmm. Yes. Cool. Next up, rat group A. Nah. They are going to attack Kurt, because Kurt's right up in their grill. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. All them grills. First up, and they have advantage on you, correct? Probably. no. Did you do reckless attack or no? I did not. Okay, so it's a normal no, roll. I only raged. Does a 15 hit you? It does not. All right. They miss. They try to bite you, and Whiskers <laughs> grabs a couple of them, and... <laughs> All right. Second group of rats is going to try and bite. It's going to move up to Celestine and try and bite Celestine. That is a natural one. Yay! Ooh. Can I hit him? Uh, unfortunately, that's not a 5e rule. Okay. <laughs> Never mind. Um, all right. So they miss. 
They, they, they're blinded. They're, they're, oh my gosh, there's there's light, there's light. A giant so, person just stepped into their square. These are the rats of Nim. They are not they the are rats not. of Nim, no. <laughs> All right, easy, it's your turn. All right, so I am going to take Lord Pride's advice and uh, use my crossbow to shoot at uh, group A of rats. Okay. Might, might I suggest that if you moved in with your um, short sword, there's an open space there now and you wouldn't have to worry about them getting cover against it. Well, they don't have cover anymore since everyone else has moved up, right? Nope, I'm in front of you still. Oh, okay. Yeah, Usarker's in front of you, Kurt's in front of A. Okay, fine. So yeah, they still have (laughs) lots of cover. Okay, then I will move up. Okay. Um, And you can technically go in their spaces. True. You know what? Let's, Let's do this. Okay, so I move up and then I cast Levitate. And then I also dropped my uh, crossbow back when I, or I first cross, dropped the crossbow and run up or whatever. And then when I get into the rat swarm, I levitate and then I'll use my scimitars. So is levitate a free action? Oh, wait. You're. Mm, never mind. Or a bonus action? No. So never mind. I don't levitate. Okay. <laughs> so you're just going to pull out a scimitar. Well, I'm going to grab out both my. Wait, and I can't grab both my scimitars. I can only grab one. Okay. Um, yeah, I grab one scimitar. Okay. And I slash at them. Perfect. You're going for A? <sighs> you said yes, you I'm going, going for A. Okay. Okay, um, that is a 21 to hit. That hits. Okay. That is... Ooh, nice. That mm-hmm. is 10 points of damage. Okay. Good to know. Again... It, it doesn't really seem to do much, unfortunately. Yep. Is there anything else you would like to do? Um, no. I'm gonna save my action surge, and I can't do my offhand attack because I don't have my other scimitar. All yet. right. Next up, Kurt. Okay. Uh, I'm going to um, steal my axe in that case. Um, or no, I, I'm I'm just gonna kick them. Okay. Go and go on some, for some rat kicking. All right. Uh, for unarmed, some, strike. unarmed strike. Um, you can do that as a barbarian. I can do that. Uh, and I'm still raging. And I have advantage. Yes. I'm specifically doing what Osarker told me to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's a hit. Uh, 14. Plus. Yeah, that's a hit. Oh. Um, four. Seven damage. Okay, and you're A, right? Yeah, okay. I'm kicking the the group A, group A, group A, ah. ah. All right, they are looking pretty hurt. Like the swarm is starting to dissipate, and they're starting to cower in front of you. Celestine, <laughs> fear our wrath. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, it's probably okay. Um, I was looking to see if I had anything that could hit multiple, but I don't think I do. So I'm going to go ahead and swing again. Okay. On group B. Oh, corn. Uh, because I'm raging, I get I got plus two uh, damage. Oh, okay. So, by the way. So, extra two? Yeah. Okay. I will mock that in there. Thank you, sir. All right. That was a 24 to hit. Yeah, that hits. <laughs> that is a 16 damage. 16 damage? I did max. Wow. <laughs> okay. I rolled two sixes and plus four. Okay. Uh, Not going to lie. Swarm of rats B. But they are Squished. starting to look a little oh, scared okay. of you. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yes. It didn't do quite as much damage, but you managed to squish a few of them, and they're like, <laughs> and they're like, run, they're starting to back up as well. Like, okay. They want to run. I will let them run. All right. Usarker, it is your All turn. Right. Hmm. Would it, what would, would it be a action or a, a free action to use a knowledge nature check if there's anything that can be used to drive or scare these rats off? Uh, Throw cheese over I, them. I'll say it's a free action. All right. I, I th- there are rules about it, but I'll say it's a free action. 
in that case, I got <laughs> an a free 18. Yeah, I think encourage it. I got an 18 on my knowledge, on my nature skill check. Okay, and what are you looking for? I want to know if there's anything that we can do that would be an easy way of driving them off since both of the groups are starting to look afraid. Fire? Uh, there isn't anything necessarily that will 100% drive them off, but based on your nature roll... You do have yeah. a cat. Throw the cat at him. That Rear. actually might break it. Uh, but you do know that they are, because they are a swarm, they have resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing. And yeah, there, there's nothing, anything that isn't those, minus a few immunities that you didn't roll high enough to get. Um, hmm. You, anything that isn't those three things will do full damage. Everybody seems to be doing only partial damage. A torch? Hit him with the torch? Did he fell catch on fire? Well, unfortunately, I don't think anybody has Nobody a torch has torches. Because you have a glow stick. I mean, we probably have one in our packs. But it's not. Because lit. we're. You're right. I'll go you ahead and take an action, action. To, li to light it. I'll go ahead and just slash oh, them. The okay. Torch, since we don't have anything prepared. I am nine. A nine misses, unfortunately. I'm going to use Tandem Tactician to aim. Every, to aim. Kurt and Isidore at A. Rats A. All right. That's the end of my turn. It is the swarm of rats' turn. Both groups, uh, the ones that Kurt and uh, Izzy were going after, they, they are dwindling in number, and they are very, very scared, and they are going to run away. Kurt... Technically, Celestine and Usarker, do you have 10 foot reach? Or um, you moved up, I, right? No, I did not you did move not? up, but I do have reach, so they are in my threatened area. So, yeah, you three can take an attack of opportunity. Actually, Izzy, you can too, because you were going after B as well. A. 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 So, if you want to take an attack of opportunity on these rats that are running away, you're more than welcome to. Nope, I'm fine. No, I'm just the going rats. to allow them to leave. Yeah. All right, they scurry away. Buh does the same thing. Okay. They're like, they are they look like, man, we didn't sign up for this. We just wanted food. And they mm -hmm. just run away. Okay. They they were just normal rats and not like magical rats, right? We could Correct. tell. Yeah. Okay. Well, do you want to do an arcana check? Sure. They, Go for it. They weren't it. glowing purple. I know they weren't glowing. They weren't unusually sized. They didn't That's shoot lasers. That's a four. <laughs> they are most definitely dragon rats. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they and have fire breath. And if you touch them, they will electrocute you. Guys, it's a good thing those rats ran away. They would have like electrocuted us or something. Hmm. Something awful. Tell I can just tell. Tell I didn't like... get electrocuted. <laughs> tell just could've. going through her head like, this sounds like something I would have told my kids. <laughs> well, that was mighty kind of them not to go electrocuting us. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Let's press on. We need to go uh, protect this mill from the raiders. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's, let's, let's see what we can do about this uh, this grill here. Yes, let's leave this one fire-breathing, electrocuting monster for another fire-breathing, electrocuting monster. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> yes. I, I, I want to... Oh, wait, no, I don't have the keys. You have, you have the keys for the... Um, I do. The gate. I I don't know if that's going to open regardless of um, keys. If it doesn't open, then we'll have to go back and request a battering ram. So, I have as a you hammer. Guys yeah, so as you guys uh, approach that grate, it it looks like a sewer outlet. If you would have been walking by, you just you never would have guessed that this was a secret mm. tunnel. Okay. Secret tunnel. I was waiting. <laughs> I've been waiting all night for someone to sing that, and it, it was it definitely took going so through long. my head earlier. But you got, you all were talking, so that was the perfect opportunity. Uh huh. <laughs> uh, as you guys as you guys look at the the lock for this this grate, it's rusted. It's old, and it looks like it might take some effort to turn that key. Can anyone have oil? So, like a strength check. <laughs> Somebody like call a for a check. strength check. <laughs> More like a dex check. So, by or effort, we mean check. finagling. You might need to oh, yeah, yes. I, was like, I could uh, turn a... it. It just might break. Do you need my thieves' tools? <gasps> you Ooh, can do thieves' tools if you that. so desire, I or have... you can just use the key. We have the key. Let's just do the key first. Try that. Let's try the key. Okay, less effort, hopefully. Mm. By a little bit. I look at it. Yeah, like the mechanisms I, I, are a little out of place. They're rusted. Isidore, not to imply anything, but you seem like you'd be better suited to this. 
<laughs> I will take the key. I'm like, okay. <laughs> and I will... Uh, She's really good with locks. <laughs> That's what I didn't want to imply. <laughs> <laughs> you said it. Okay. I help people find their lost things. Like, eh. Of course you do. <laughs> <laughs> it's my side job. Um, so I take the key and... <laughs> I will put it in the lock and I will like look to make sure that like there's nothing obstructing the lock and um if I notice that there's anything that that's stuck or whatever I'll actually like try to clean it up yeah I'll try to clean it up maybe like um take some of my uh spare materials uh for like jewelry like wire and stuff like that like help scrape off some of uh the grime or whatever that might be stuck in there that would act as an obstruction uh mm -hmm. to get the key in there and then uh, see if the key will fit in all the way before I start to try and turn it. All right, go ahead. All right. And this is just a normal uh, dexterity check? Dexterity. Okay. It is not acrobatics, unfortunately. <laughs> you dance around the of key. Hand? Uh, this, this one specifically calls for a straight dex check. Okay. okay. That's a six. <laughs> Roll the two. That's bad. Do I get advantage for all of my inspecting of the stuff? I could at give you point, advantage for tandem yeah, tactics. At, at this point, I would say no. Okay. Uh, you you it's turning your here, and you, you try to push the mechanisms back into place, and it's just it's not budging. Okay, I'm gonna remove the key. Okay. And I'm going to clean it out again. Okay. And try and reinsert the key. Go ahead. Okay. Can I roll with advantage? Yes. If okay. I give her, say, some oil, could I give? Could that be considered helping? The mechanism itself has rusted, and some of the stuff are out of place. So oil wouldn't necessarily work because the mechanism itself is out of. As a trained uh... smith with mm -hmm. knowledge of such things, mm -hmm. could mm -hmm. I know where to apply oil in order to help? Uh, or go go ahead and or, or pressure or something. Yes. What kind of knowledge check or would that a, be? A well-placed um, I'm hoping that it's intelligence plus smithing tool proficiency. That w Yeah, I would say yes, that would be it. Can I take 10 on this, or do I have to roll? Uh, if you take 10, it's going to take 10 minutes of you guys yeah, let's uh, sitting there. Uh, okay, fair enough. Um, well, that is a... Not a 10? 11. Is that good enough to assist? Mm. That is good enough to assist, <laughs> so you do get advantage. Okay. I rolled a 5. <laughs> Slightly less than oh, 10. Oh, good. I needed oh. that. Um, okay, so that is a 23. Oh. For other dice. So with four. the help of Usarker, and he's kind of coached you, he's like, oh, wait, that, that part's a little rusted. And he kind of like sticks his finger in there and kind of shifts the gear out of the way. You do eventually open it up, and you hear... <sighs> and you are able to like open to up the grate. <laughs> and I remove the key and hand it back to Lord Pride. Yeah, just out of out of game information. <laughs> if you would have rolled a five instead of a six, the lock would have broken, <gasps> and the key would have broken as well. Oh my goodness! And then Celestine would have been the, that would have been hammer. if I rolled a natural one, guys. Oh, okay. Yeah. And we would have all thought it was because it was a natural one. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> it would work. Yeah, you had to do five or higher. Oh and, boy. Uh, you know, this is one of those things where the rules say that on a five or five or lower it breaks and does all that. But on a natural one, maybe the, the metal lock also explodes. <laughs> <laughs> like a shard of metal embeds itself in your skin and irritates you for the next week. Yeah, oh somehow, <laughs> yeah, you rolled a natural one. Somehow it exploded. I guess there was an explosive on this thing. Oh, That's what was keeping it awful. from turning. <laughs> oh, darn. <laughs> Thank goodness right. that didn't happen. The gate's okay. open. <laughs> Do we want the light extinguished so we aren't a target? Yeah. Mm, what time of day is it? It's night, night right? right? Yeah, so at night. this point, you guys would have gotten... Midnight? You guys would have gotten to the keep around... I, I, 8 p.m., 9 p.m.? I think it was more like 9 p.m. Based on, you know, some wonky hours. time that I can't, I vaguely remember. Mm. So at this point, it's probably around 11, 11.30. Okay. In the evening. In the evening, So hmm. we is will there not... a moon out? Can yeah. we see without how, how light? How dark is dark? Yeah, yeah you get, really if you dark. guys walk around, you do have low light. You can see, you can see things. You can see bushes. You can see trees. The, the moon is not, it's not like completely dark out there. The moon Dim is light. fine. You also have a dragon. 
every once in a while shooting out electricity, which is kind of lighting up the town a little bit. There we go. So, but let's not and there's draw fires. attention to ourselves with light, since we can see well enough. If so, we need on to. the other hand, the cultists undoubtedly need light as well. Perhaps if we mimicked whatever light sources they have. The torch? Do we see yeah, any cultists running them. around right now? You know what? Go ahead and make a perception check on that. Okay. Everybody or just Izzy? Anybody who wants to look outside. Seven. Eight. Eighteen. Nine. Yes! Yes, we got seven, eight, nine. Wow. When your powers combine. (laughs) (laughs) We become the ultimate number joke? (laughs) Yes. (laughs) So you you three, uh, Celestine, Kurt, and Izzy. It's dark. Yeah, you're just... You're just so excited that the door Wait, got open. Wait, is that natural lightning or the dragon? I, I can't tell. Oh, no. <laughs> there you go. Uh, the circer, on the other hand, just as they're stepping out, you hear... <laughs> and then you're, you hear, like, very faint splashing. Uh-oh. I shush the party. I turn out the light. And I watch in perfect stillness my black armor blending into the black water. I'm waiting to see if they have any sort of light that they carry with them in order to see. They actually do. They have a couple torches. And as they come around the corner, you do notice that there are two hooded figures and six kobolds walking around. And as they get closer, you hear, Man, I don't think anybody's out here. Why? Why are we with everybody else? I saw some. I saw some people carrying a cat. That was kind of cool. Uh, and that that golden that goose thing. That was awesome. And another <laughs> one says, "Yeah, I just wanted loot. Why? Why am I here? I just. I, I thought we would be done by now. I gotta get home to my my family, man. And you hear a cultist say, "Quiet, you two. That's enough. We are looking." For anybody else who may be in this vicinity. So I think that Usarker is not going to move and is going to remain in perfect stillness and quietness. Um, I don't know what the rest of the party's going to do, but that's what I'm doing. Izzy is like blending into the rock as much as she can. Mm -hmm. Do we need to close? Yeah, I guess leave the door open. I assume that we are like in the. Uh, like in the doorway of it. Okay. In I'll... process. When this happened. I'm not moving. You're not moving. I feel like if I move, I'm just gonna make it worse. So I'm just not gonna yeah. move. I'm, I'm I'm gonna pull out my you know a- get my axe ready in case. You're hiding in plain sight. <laughs> All right, go ahead and do a stealth check. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're holding your breath. Mm. Is this? Oh, Izzy is definitely nine. holding her breath because she doesn't need to breathe. Um, I'm, I'm, yeah. <laughs> Makes sense. <laughs> guys, guys, I wear heavy armor. You get oh, right? I have a minus two. Crit, uh, you Kayla, get disadvantage. This is the time to crit. <laughs> <clears throat> Did you crit the wrong way? Did you get negative? No, I didn't. I got zero. <laughs> <laughs> That's not negative. It's zero. not negative. I got a five. We oh, are not. I also not have disadvantage in heavy armor. Uh, I was hoping we had twenty-two. <laughs> Hi, My not breathing worked. <laughs> <laughs> Kurt, what'd you get? A nine. Our party has strengths. Our party has weaknesses. Our party has strengths. This is a- <laughs> <laughs> yep. physical only. Not it. <laughs> All right, so you hear them talking a little bit, and. There, there's a pause, and the cultist says, "Yeah, nobody's down here. Let, let's go back." And I, I imagine you start one of hearing them going into, away. into the river and goes sploosh. I mean, maybe they thought it was another kobold. Must be frogs or something. Yeah, that's what it is. Rats. Yeah, so Definitely rats. You, we you... rolled so badly. Did we hear ourselves? <laughs> And how much noise we made. (laughs) You rode so badly that you heard your existence in the cosmos. The ripples of energy that your life 
has made in the cosmos. Is but it, they seem to be moving so away loud. from you. What's wrong with you? Like an orc in full plate running downstairs. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Into a kitchen. Into a kitchen. <laughs> yes. Add to it. And then a china shop. <laughs> and then, yes, and a china shop right next door. <laughs> so yeah, they they just turned around. They said that nobody else was here, and they just turned around. Huh. And you and you hear the sounds moving away, and eventually you don't hear anything. That's really strange. But okay. Um. After they yep. leave, I'm going to say, that was odd, but we need to close and lock this gate. Mm-hmm. And I oh, suggest that'd be terrible that... If, oh, that'd be terrible if they came in behind us. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I suggest that since they are using light and we do not know the route or the path, we might as well bring out torches as well. Okay. And okay. I'll pull. Pretend. True. I can pull a torch. Okay. Boop. You and me hold a torch? Yep. Also, Cap- I handed you back the key. Can I get the key back so I can lock the gate after us? I'm going to hand you the key. Okay. <laughs> and I will lock the gate after us. I'm assuming it's a little bit easier this time since it got it to work the first time. Okay. Managed to lock it. You don't hear anything. What okay. do you do? Also, do you want the key back or you want me to hold on to it? Um, Either, either way, that's fine. Hold on to that. That's okay. Not, you just hold on to it. That way, I'm not constantly giving. I it attach to you. it to my belt with all my other jewelry. All, uh, all <laughs> the jingles. Oh, good. It's hidden in plain sight. <laughs> <laughs> no one's finding that key. <laughs> so as you guys start kind of heading your way down to the mill, to the mill, let's go. You hear, shook, and an arrow comes shooting right at you guys. And yep. you hear a bunch of cries of kobolds <laughs> as they start to start coming out of the the bushes, mm-hmm. and they are surrounding you. Cool. Yep, trap. Cool. And that is where we're going to end our session. Hey everyone, this is Corin. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Power Word Crit. Stay tuned for more adventure on PowerWordCrit.com or your favorite podcast streaming site. As we end this episode, please enjoy this P.S. Are you tired of the daily hundrum? Is your village overrun with kobolds and cultists? Do you ever just need to get away from it all? Well, come on down to Kurt's Loggin Lodge and Flapjack House in the Sunset Mountains. We've got more excitements and entertainments than you can shake a 10-foot pole at. We got tree felling, log rolling, hatchet throwing, wrestling matches, wood carving, and even river grads for the kids. And if all that doesn't work up a cave bear's appetite... The sweet, sweet smell of Mama Connor's famous flapjacks and fixins will surely get you there. Good grub, good folk, and good times. Down at Kurt's Loggin Lodge and Flapjack House in the Sunset Mountains.